In this video, we will show you how to replace your rear backing plate on this Lincoln Navigator. You'll be able to find these located behind each of your rear wheels. The process will be the same for either. Let's get into it. Okay friends, let's get started on our job. The first thing that we need to do is safely raise and support the rear of the vehicle so the wheels are off the ground. Once you've done that, continue on to removing your center cover. We'll do that using a pry bar. Carefully get in between this area and pop this out of place. A quick inspection, set it aside. Once you have that done, continue on to your five 21 millimeter lug nuts and then remove the wheel. Now the next thing we're going to have to do is remove our caliper from the area. To easily remove this, use a small pry bar and push back your caliper piston. Once you have a little bit of movement coming from there, continue on to your two 10 millimeter headed mounting bolts that hold the caliper to the backside of the differential. Inspect your hardware as you remove it, replace it as necessary. Now we can continue on by taking hold of the caliper and we'll pull it off diagonally starting from the top and then we can lift it up and away along the bottom as well. With that off of there, give the brakes a quick inspection. Make sure it doesn't look like the pads are worn in an odd way or damaged. After that, just have a quick peek at the rotor. We'll set this aside. Continue on to removing your brake rotor. Quick inspection of both sides and set that aside. Now that we have that out of the way, you're going to want to pay attention to your parking brake shoes and the hardware. You're going to have to remove each of these so you want to make sure they're still in good condition. If they look like ours do here, it's a good idea to replace them. We'll start by removing our lower spring. You can do this using some long nose pliers. Grab onto the edge of the spring and pull it to the hole in the shoe. Now we can start removing our anchor pins and clips. For this, we'll continue on using a small pry bar and those long nose pliers carefully press in on the locking clip. While you have that pressed in, use your locking pliers to grab onto the tip of the pin and turn it to the open position. At this point, we'll release pressure. Remove that locking clip, give it a quick inspection. With that out of the way, continue on to pushing the pin out and through the backside of the backing plate. Quick inspection of that pin and set it aside. Now we'll do the same to the other anchor pin and locking clip. With both of those out of there, we'll continue on to removing the adjuster down along the bottom. This can easily be done by grabbing onto one of the parking brake shoes and slowly separating it. After that, you can remove the adjuster. All right, grab onto both of those shoes and remove them from the vehicle. Let's get that last spring off of here. Now that we have all that out of the way, let's continue on to removing this piece from the parking brake actuator. Give it a quick inspection, make sure it's not rusted and rotten in any way. Assuming it looks good, set that aside. Now to remove the axles from the vehicle, we're going to have to remove the rear differential cover. You can see you have the rear sway bar in the way. Let's start by removing the two sway bar brackets. On each of these brackets, you'll find that you have two 13 millimeter bolts holding them in place. Remove the bolts and the brackets, give them a quick inspection, and set each of them aside. Uh -huh. 
At this point, you can take hold of that bar and swing it out of the way. With the sway bar out of the way, let's make our way along the forward aspect on the driver's side of the differential. You'll find that you have a fill plug that you can remove using a 3 8 drive ratchet. I'll use a short extension inside here first. Typically there will be some rust. Before you pull this out of here, it's a good idea to make sure you have a collection bucket under the area. Give that a quick inspection, set it aside. Now let's move our collection pan underneath the rear differential cover. For the differential cover, you'll find that you have 12 13 millimeter headed bolts making their way around, holding it in place to the rear differential. You should also find that you have two tags on it. When you remove all this, it's a good idea to go ahead and clean it down, and then of course make sure that you reinstall each of the tags that you had removed. This one has a tag. There's another tag. Let's leave that last bolt in there just a couple threads. The next thing that we'll do is start separating the pan from the differential. You might find that it's stuck in place with a gasket maker. We'll gently pry the pan off of here, being extremely careful not to damage it in any way. At this point, we'll continue on separating this. Let's control that fluid as it comes out let it fully drain. Now that that's done draining, I'll hold the pan, finish removing my last bolt from the area, and remove the pan from the rear differential. We'll give this a quick inspection and set it aside. We will have to clean it and reuse it. Now the next thing that you're going to want to do is put the vehicle in neutral so you can spin the rear drive shaft to get to our next mounting bolt. Now let's continue on spinning the drive shaft. What we're looking for is access to this bolt right here and this pin. Now once you feel as though you have it at a point where you can gain access to this mounting bolt and remove it, and also remove this pin, make your way back into the passenger compartment, put your vehicle in park, and remove the key. Remove this bolt using a 3 8 I'll use a 3 8 socket to start removing this bolt. Typically, you'll have to switch to a wrench. Now while you pull out this mounting bolt, make sure that you're holding onto this pin so it does not fall down and hit the ground. 
We'll give this a quick inspection, make sure it's not rotted or damaged in any way, clean it up and set it aside. You will be reusing it. Now we can carefully remove this pin. I'll reach up along the top here and press it down and out. Quick inspection, clean it up, set it aside. Now that we have that out of there, we're going to have to push the outer aspect of the axle in towards the center here. When you do that, you'll find that you have a horseshoe looking clip. That clip should fall out of a groove that's on the end of the axle. If it does not fall out, you can use a magnet or an angled pick. Let's give this a little wiggle, pop right out of there. That's what it looks like right there. Give that a quick inspection and set that aside. Let's make our way back out here to the axle. Take hold of this and carefully start sliding it out of the differential, being extremely careful not to damage the seal. Keep in mind, this can be a little heavy. Set that aside. With the axle out of the way, we're going to continue on, using a clean rag, put it right in the center hole here, where the axle was located. This is to protect the inside of the differential where the bearings are located from any miscellaneous debris. Now what we're going to do is move along to removing our two rivets that are holding the backing plate in place. You'll find one towards the rear here, and one along the front. You can remove these using a drill or a cutting tool. Now let's continue on using two 19 millimeters. You'll find that you have four bolts that protrude from the rear towards the outer aspect here and four nuts holding the backing plate in place. Use a 19 millimeter wrench on the bolt head and a 19 millimeter socket for the mounting nut. There's that bolt. Make sure that you give these a quick inspection. Make sure they are still reusable. Replace them as necessary. Do the same to all. Keep in mind, as you remove the last mounting bolt, it's the only thing holding this backing plate in place. <laughs> Remove the backing plate from the vehicle. There it is, friends. Now that we have the backing plate out of the way, continue on to cleaning the mounting area. You'll find that you have the base all the way around, Make sure that that's clean and free of any debris. You also need to pay attention up along this area. It's common to find some rock flakes. If that's the case, just go ahead and knock that right out of there. Continue on with a wire brush. All right, let's get ready to install our brand new backing plate. Make sure you have the proper one. You'll find that you should have an area that's carved out for the caliper to go. Let's take this and put it into position. Now, once you have it on there and all four of your mounting bolt holes are lined up, start the bolts through from the rear out this way and start on each one of the mounting nuts.
Now we can snug these up using our two 19 millimeters. Continue on to cleaning and inspecting your axle seal. Once you have it wiped down, let's pull this out of here. Now it's time to inspect the seal. Make sure it's soft and pliable, and it's not torn, worn, or damaged in any way. Assuming that looks good, let's move along to the axle. Looking at the axle, you want to pay attention directly at the spot where that axle seal is supposed to ride. Go ahead and clean this down and give it a close inspection. You want to make sure there is not any grooves or damage in this area. Once you have this wiped down and inspected, continue on to the installation. Now that we have that pressed through, have a look inside of the rear differential. We're looking for the very end of the axle. There should be a groove, and that's where this piece goes. Take that, slide it into place. Once you do, press the axle outward. Once you have that in place, continue on to pulling the axle outward. Now let's continue on with our clean and inspected pin and the mounting bolt. You'll find that I clean the threads and I use just a tiny bit of blue thread locker. Never use red thread locker. We'll take this and slide it into place, paying attention to the mounting bolt hole. Have that facing side to side. Once you feel as though you have it bottomed out, just make sure it's nice and snug. After that's tight, pay attention inside of this area. You'll notice along the bottom of the differential on the inside, there's a pocket that holds a lot of fluid. It's a good idea to remove all that. Either use something absorbent to pull it out of there or use a fluid vacuum. Once you have removed all the fluid from inside the differential, it's important to note, do not use parts cleaner inside this area. You have bearings and it's important to make sure that they stay lubricated. Now with that said, we're going to have to continue on to cleaning down the differential where the pan is going to sit. Typically you're going to find a whole bunch of debris on here, leftover gasket. Now when we're cleaning this, you want to make sure none of it falls on any of the internals of your rear differential. For this, I'll just use some rags, tuck them up in here, and make sure everything's protected and clean. To clean this, you want to make sure that you do not damage the rear differential using some sort of sanding disc. We'll just use a flat scraper and scrape off as much of this as possible. Continue on to spraying it down with some degreaser. You want to make sure that it's a smooth surface and it's free and clear of any oils. Now once you have this scraped down all the way around, we'll continue on with a rag and some parts cleaner. Spray it directly on the rag and then wipe this down.
The next thing you'll want to do is clean the pan along where your gasket maker is going to go and also clean the threads on all 12 of your bolts. If you're using a gasket maker, make sure it says oil resistant. Continue on making a bead all the way around your rear differential pan. With a gloved finger, go ahead and smooth it out. Make sure you have plenty of gasket maker in every spot, and then you can continue on to putting this up to the differential. Start in each of your 12 mounting bolts. Now that I have one on this side, I'll do the same on the other side to hold the pan. Make sure you reinstall both of your tags as you go. After each of them are snug, torque them to 33 foot-pounds. Let's lower our sway bar into place, put our brackets on there, start in each of the four mounting bolts. Once you have all four started, snug them up, torque them to 70 foot-pounds. Now let's make our way out here and continue on putting on the top of the parking brake actuator. The next thing you'll want to do is take apart your parking brake adjuster. Once you have that taken apart, continue on by cleaning up the threads. Now we can prepare the adjuster. We'll use a little bit of lubricant on the threading. That'll help prevent rust. Take the adjuster and put it back together. I'll screw this all the way up towards the tip. Set this aside. Let's clean up the mating surface on the end of the axle. For this, we'll use parts cleaner and a wire brush. Make sure it's a smooth mating surface. Continue with some high temperature caliper lubricant. We'll come in along each side of this bracket. On the backing plate, you'll find that you have several areas that protrude outward a little bit. Those are the areas that you need to lubricate. Now, 
Now it's time to install our parking brake shoes and hardware. Let's put this into place along the top hole. Do the same on the other shoe. Now we can take these shoes and start putting them in place. Now we'll continue on with one of our anchor pins and the mounting clip. Looking at the clip, you can see that you have a slotted hole and a round hole. The round hole goes up against the shoe, and as you have it like that, we'll continue on by putting this through the backing plate, straight through the shoe, and then make it sway to the clip. Once you've done that, we'll have to continue on by making sure that we have this in this position so that the pin is held to the clip. While pressing in on this clip, we're going to grab onto the pin, twist it until it's in the locked position. All right, now we can move along to installing our adjuster. You'll find on each side of the adjuster, you have a small slot where each shoe should sit. You also want to pay attention to the cog area here. Make sure that that's facing towards the rear. If you put it in this way, you won't be able to adjust the shoes properly. We'll take this and put it into position in the slot on each of the lower part of the shoes. Now we can install that spring. Double check to make sure the adjuster is seated properly. Now we can put in the other pin and lock and clip. Make sure that one's locked in position as well. Continue on to some copper never sees along the mating surface of the axle where your rotor is going to sit. Over a collection bucket, let's make sure we clean the mating surface on the back side of our rear rotor. Swipe down that braking surface as well. Do the same on both sides. Let's take that brake rotor and put it in place. Now let's have a look from the back side of the backing plate. Looking through this slot, you can see the adjuster cog. To make an adjustment, you can use a small pry bar or flat screwdriver. Carefully make your way in between here and gently pry up against the backing plate and the cog, turning the cog in whichever direction you need to go to adjust the shoes. To adjust the shoes out closer to the drum, you're going to want to turn that cog up. So we would take this and come right in here and just keep going up. To bring the shoes back in or to de-adjust them, you would come in up along the top of the cog and turn it downward. Now that's important to note because you're going to have to take the rotor and try to spin it a little bit. We're going to adjust these out until you get no movement from the rotor. Basically the parking brake shoes will be squeezing up against the rotor holding it in place. Once you've done that, de-adjust them until you can get a little bit of movement from that rotor. Now right there it's adjusted to the point that I cannot turn the rotor. At this point, I'm going to de-adjust this until I can get a little bit of movement from this. Come up along the top and gently turn it back. There we are. 
let's take our protective cover and slide it into position. Continue on to your brake caliper. We'll take this and slide it in position over the rotor, making sure that we bring the bottom side in first and then rolling the top into position as well. Install both of your caliper slider bolts, snug them up, torque them to 20 foot-pounds. Now we can reinstall our wheel. Start on all five of your 21 millimeter lug nuts and bottom them out. Once you have that done, put your wheel back safely on the ground. Torque each of your lug nuts to 150 foot pounds in a crisscross manner. Torqued. If you have a center cover, put that on now. Looking at the back, you can tell that you have five holes that need to line up. Line it up, knock it in. Okay friends, we've got the vehicle back together. At this point, go ahead and hop inside of it. Actuate your emergency brake and make sure that it functions properly. Aside from that, take it for a road test. Thanks for watching. When only the best will do, demand TRQ. The only company that lets you view before you do. TRQ is committed to offering the highest quality aftermarket auto parts that are engineered for peace of mind. Thanks for using and viewing with TRQ.